We're here with the director with two movies in the main uh, selection of a competition in Fantasporto. Julian, uh, how did you like this edition of uh, Fantasporto, 39th? Uh, well, this was um, a, a great edition for me because um, I was actually at the festival with uh, two films. Um, the last um, uh, 18 months have been the most busiest uh, months of my life. Um, uh, sometimes um, making a film is like um, uh, it's like wait, waiting for a bus to arrive, you know, and uh, it can take three, four, five years before you get a project off the ground. And uh, this particular year, um, you know, two buses came along at the same time. So I had to uh, schedule my year in such a way that I was able to do two. Uh, that, that meant shooting uh, Daddy's Girl, the, the first film, in uh, Tbilisi, Georgia, in um, September, October. Um, then uh, flying straight to Los Angeles for the American film market and then going into production on Reborn, the second film, in December in Los Angeles. Um, so yeah, it's fantastic to be here with two films and also uh, to win the Best Director Award as a result. I personally uh, found it uh, interesting that one of the movies is called uh, Daddy's Girl and the other could have been Reborn, could have been where named uh, Mummy's Girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, both films are um, have very sort of strong uh, uh, female characters in the story and um, a very sort of um, uh, feminine stories, um, which is uh, not really by design. It just so happened that the projects were that way inclined and, uh, and, 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 and happened to be made, you know, right next to each other. Um, but yes, I mean, um, with Daddy's Girl, um, Daddy Skill is, um, uh, for want of a better uh, way of describing it, it's a, it's a post Me Too torture porn film. Um, it's the story of a, um, a girl who is being held captive by her stepfather after the suicide of her mother. And her stepfather is an Iraq war veteran who is also a serial killer. And he uses his, his stepdaughter as, as bait to lure victims. Um, and she is sort of very much um, caught up in this situation, um, uh, uh, like a Stockholm Syndrome kind of situation. And um, it's through the intervention of, um, on the one hand, a cop, a, a sort of a rookie cop, and a vigilante uh, that provide her the opportunity to escape. Um, so ultimately, even though she begins as a victim, uh, she actually evolves through the story, she empowers herself and, uh, and escapes the situation. Um, and not only that, she actually sort of becomes an avenging angel at the end of the film too. Um, so it, it, it's a very sort of um, dark, um, dark uh, world that the film takes place in, but there's light at the end of the tunnel. And then with Reborn, um, Reborn is... Uh, really about two characters, um, uh, a mother and a daughter. Um, the, um, the mother is a Hollywood actress whose career is, is, is failing. Um, and um, the problem is, is that when she was younger, um, she, um, she became pregnant. And um, uh, she, um, when she gave birth, her, her baby was stillborn. Um, and, um, she never really came to terms with that. She never really had any closure about that. She was just too focused on her career. Um, and um, now that she's sort of um, midlife, um, she, she wants to revisit that and try and find some sense of closure. What she doesn't realize actually that her, her stillborn baby daughter um, was brought back to life in, 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 in the hospital morgue uh, by the morgue attendant. Um, as a result of an electrical storm um, and was taken away and basically brought up in captivity um, uh, until she reached the age of 16. Um, and at the age of 16 she decides to escape her captor, which is the morgue attendant, and go in search of her mother. So you have, you know, the mother searching for the daughter and the daughter searching for the mother and they eventually find each other. Um, but this being a genre film, this being a horror film, it's, um, it's not a happy ending. <laughs> uh, what was your influence or inspiration in making Reborn? Uh, Reborn, um, 
for me is a sort of a, a meta horror. I would like to, to describe it as it's a. It's very nostalgic. It's a, it's a celebration of um, of some of my favourite um, horror films of the 80s, uh, films like Carrie, uh, The Fury, Scanners, um, The Omen, Christine. There are lots of, um, of references in the film. Um, so on, on, on the one hand, it's it's very you know reflective of the genre, um, but also uh, it, it's it's also. Um, about having, you know, about what it's like to have a career in film, um, and particularly from from the mother's point of view, you know, that she sacrificed so much in her life um, to uh, to do what she does, and um, she's now sort of trying uh, a little bit late in life to um, to uh, to somehow um, make up for everything that she sacrificed. So you know, there, there you know, there's there's a there's, there's very much a human side of the story, but there's also a cineast, um, fanboy kind of side to the story. Right. Uh, you're also a man uh, with a couple of, of many hats, being uh, the director, producer, and also a sales agent. Tell us about the, that activity, Jinga. Yeah, well, uh, about 12 years ago, um, I um, set up uh, uh, my sales company, Jinga Films. Um, that came about because I was getting frustrated with what was happening with my films in sales and distribution. Um, and also I put a lot of my own money into a film that I made called The Last Horror Movie. And I needed to make sure that I got that money back. Um, and I felt that I knew enough about sales and distribution um, at that time to, um, to have a go at, at selling um, The Last Horror Movie. And we were very successful uh, with that film. Uh, so much so that um, a lot of producers were coming to me and saying, "Oh, could, could you, you know, could you do the same thing with our film?" And it kind of snowballed. I didn't really intend to um, to become a sales agent, um, but um, but I did by not not by accident, but it was sort of by design. But um, what, what I like about sales is that it, it's incredibly informative about the business side of filmmaking, um, and that's a side. Uh, that I didn't really understand as, as a filmmaker, um, and now that I've, I've come to understand, um, and you know, knowledge is power. Um, and in many ways, um, it, I got these two films, Daddy's Girl and Reborn, as a result of being a sales agent. I sort of like to describe myself as a universal soldier, you know, that, um, uh, and, and I believe that, you know, as a filmmaker, you have to be, because you can often find yourself in situations where people are sort of. Uh, taking you in the wrong direction um, and forcing you to do things that are, that, that, that are not going to work out well and you you sort of need to have a sense of the bigger picture um, and you know I think that um, it's useful um, as a creative to understand the business side and to allow the business side to inform your decision making creatively. And explain us what's the meaning of Jinga films? Jinga? Jinga. Uh, Jinga Bell? Uh, <laughs> no, it's um, Jinga is actually a uh, uh, Portuguese Brazilian word. Uh, it comes from capoeira, uh, the Brazilian martial art. Um, it means um, rhythm, balance, stability. Um, if you have Jinga, it means you have you know you you can dance, um, and um, uh, that's everything that you need in the film industry. So it means also don't mess with jury. <laughs> it means that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, congratulations. Enjoy the rest of your stay in Porto. Thank you, and uh, thank you, filmfestivals.com. Wonderful.